I'm paddling on Canal Run, which is a very small, narrow, windy canal between the Stephen Foster State Park and the refuge side of the park. Anyway, the last time I came through here, which is about five or six years ago, this scene right here, this tree down was... Uh, it was like this the entire way. It took me half a day to get through here. This is the first down tree I've come to on this section. And this is why I bring a fold, foldable saw with me when I take trips like this. Because getting out of your boat right here is really not a good, good option. So I'm going to spin sideways here, cut this thing up, and get back underway. Pretty certain that I just saw a bear take off into the woods. Unfortunately, my camera was not rolling. I'm going to quietly paddle up here and see if we can hear or see him or a horror. Yep. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but. That is a bear tromping around just to the right of me. I'd say probably 30 or 40 yards in that type stuff. Wish I could have got a better look. can get his attention. Second or third bear I've seen here in the Okefenokee. Both times, well, the last two times at least, they were both right down by the water. I'm hoping I'll see more on Floyd's Island once I get there. But it's hit or miss. But there are certainly plenty of them out here. Anyway, I'm still on Canal Run. I've been on Canal Run for probably about two hours now, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. 
it's definitely opening up a little bit. The current is still fairly swift though. I'm hoping to make it to Canal Run Shelter by lunchtime. Be a good place to get out, stretch my legs, have something to eat before I finish this, this trip up today. This should be Floyd's Island. I left Chase Prairie about 30 minutes ago. I've been working my way down this very shallow canal towards the island. I've been kind of nervous, honestly, because of the depth of the water. I mean, it's literally three or four inches deep now. If the water level drops a few more inches, this this section, this part of the island island won't be accessible anymore. I'm close enough now. If I had to, I could get up and drag my kayak up to the yeah. It's been a long day. It's left at eight o'clock this morning, and I think it's uh, probably two or three o'clock now. Anyway, this is uh, always done. Here at Floyd's Island in the middle of the Okefenokee Swamp. I'm uh, actually staying here at this cabin that's about 100 years old. This is a relic of the, the logging days here in the swamp. This island and others like it were at one time heavily logged and uh, there was a, a lot of activity. Uh, there were actually two other cabins here on the island. Um, there's some evidence, if you walk around in the woods, of some of the rail lines that used to run across these islands. Anyway, the cabin's still here. It was restored uh, by the Boy Scouts some years back. It's still in pretty good shape. Um, I've actually got my tent set up on the porch. I'd rather be outside just uh, for the weather and 
uh, according to some journal entries, there's some mice running around inside, so I prefer to not deal with that in the middle of the night. Also, some uh, according to some of the journal entries that I was reading earlier, the uh, been some bobcat sightings recently. Um, haven't seen any bears that I read, although I, I'm told there are bear on the island. Um, but yeah, I'm told that bobcat, or read several entries that uh, indicated the bobcat frequents this cabin at night. So I'm anxious to, to see if we have any visitors. Um, probably get a fire. I've got some wood cut and stacked. Um, looking forward to having a fire tonight. Having some dehydrated camp food. And then getting up in the morning and uh, finishing uh, my paddle back to Stephen Foster. This island is about three miles long and about a quarter mile wide. Um, in order to get here, as you can see, my boat's sitting here in front of this cabin. You've got to portage your boat across the island. Uh, it's about a, it was about 300 yards to, to drag it up over here. Not too bad. And then in the morning, I'll continue down this trail here about another 200 yards to to, to exit the island on the uh, west side so anyway not a bad uh, not a bad place to set up camp i've already seen lots of deer um i'm gonna sit here on the porch i've got my book out read a little bit and then make some dinner and sit by the fire good morning day two on the oki finoki swamp i spent the night on floyd's island um, I started to do some exploring last night on the island, but it was pretty warm, and I was a little bit nervous about snakes, um, plus I was running out of daylight. So I got up early this morning, while it's still cool, temperature, temperature in the 40s. Um, anyway, I'm trying to get to the middle of the island, I'm about a mile away from where I camped last night at the cabin. Uh, there's a, an old railroad line that used to run... Uh, down the middle of the island I've, I've, I'm standing on the uh, I'm in the area now where the railroad ran uh, there's no evidence of it thus far except for the fact that this is a fairly significant raised up area uh, the elevation here is about two or three feet higher than the surrounding elevation um, using my GPS here on my phone or app that I use uh, working my way down like I said, I'm trying to get to the center of the island. There's a, there's actually a spur with the railroad forked off in a couple of spots. I don't know if I'm going to make it though. It's uh, as you can see, it's it's pretty thick out here, um, and it's also wet in spots. I don't mind the, the thickness so much. Um, it's just so slow going out here. Anyway trying to be a little bit conservative in where I venture. Usually I'm not very conservative, but considering it's a a 12 mile kayak paddle back to civilization and probably 10 miles before I could get a cell phone signal. I am erring on the side of caution. Um, this is kind of a nice little area. Not typical of what I've what I've gone through, or had to go, go through to get to where I am. But um, yeah, every once in a while you come to a little clearing like this, it makes travel nice. But uh, for the most part, it's been pretty thick and pretty wet. So I'm going to continue working my way, see if I can get to the other end of Floyd's. I probably won't make it all the way to the end, considering it's about a three mile walk, and there is absolutely nothing out here nobody's been out here there's no trails out here except for what the game leave but uh it's beautiful nonetheless so i'm gonna keep working my way down the island here so i'm here on floyd's island still i've been walking for i don't know almost an hour now i haven't gone real far maybe a mile um which isn't actually too bad in these conditions but I've definitely managed to find the the rail line. I mean, you can see where it once was. It's depicted on my uh, GPS, my USGS map, as being right here in this big mound of earth that runs along the 
middle of the island supports that. But anyway, um, this is, this is it right here. Anyway, it just runs to the middle of the, the island. Or, um, but obviously, it's it's been ripped up years ago, and it's had a chance to revegetate, and uh, there's really nothing left uh, other than this mound of earth. I'm going to continue to try to get to the center, though. I, I'd like to get to where that spur is, see if there's any evidence of anything. It is definitely slow going, though, in spots. Um, I have not seen any wildlife, but I shouldn't be that surprised. Walking through palmettos and such. Sound like a bull in a china shop, so any wildlife can probably hear me coming long, long before I get within eyesight. It is pretty in here, despite being so thick. You can definitely see all sorts of areas you come across where you can see where animals have bedded down um, in the palmettos or just in the vegetation. Um, but yeah, they're obviously uh, they're clearing a path for me. They can hear me coming. So anyway, I'm going to put this camera down so I can bushwhack through this stuff. It's getting thick again. All right, I'm still here on Floyd's Island. I'm going to call it. I, uh, I've been at it for well over an hour now. And it just uh, keeps getting ridiculous. These palmettos and briars. Uh, everything's just getting ridiculous. And my pace has slowed dramatically. So at the rate I'm headed, I won't I won't make it to the middle of the island for probably another well, probably another 90 minutes so uh, my feet are soaked and I'm just uh, like I said I'm just going to call it it's just getting ridiculous if I was closer to home and didn't have a huge paddle ahead of me um, or I was uh, wearing thicker more canvas like pants I would probably tr continue forward but again it's um, it's just now it's become the path of least resistance. I've I've gotten off the rail line a pretty good ways, and I'm uh, yeah, just to try to just try just trying to get make some progress here. But it's gotten so slow that I don't know that it's worth it. And there's probably nothing down there anyway. It's probably just more of this. But it was a neat feature on one of the old maps I had. I thought it's neat neat to. Uh, to try to get down there but it's not so and it's gonna get nothing but warmer here and when it gets warm and the sun starts coming up is when the snakes start showing themselves so I'm gonna try to retrace my steps back to camp and uh, probably have lunch and then get get to paddling back to uh, Stephen Foster because that's gonna be a long day so I'm going to put the camera down again and uh, get the bushwhack in here. Well, every once in a while the planets align and you get lucky and come into a nice clear area like this. It makes walking so much, so much nicer. I will tell you this, um, I wouldn't dare come out here without a, a good GPS and um, or at least a good compass and some good land navigation skills. It's uh, it wouldn't take anything to get lost out here, and if you did, you'd be in deep trouble. Although there is no cell phone service out here, I do carry a spot tracker, which I could use uh, to uh, if I got in trouble, I could I could hit the SOS button and search and rescue would eventually come find me. Um, so I do carry one of those in case something were to happen. But uh, anyway, this is a real pretty area. Still haven't seen any wildlife. I know there's plenty of it out here, though. I've seen sign everywhere. In fact, looks like, yeah, here's some bear scat right here. It's an older pile that is kind of dried up. But anyway, yeah, there are a lot of bear on this island, bobcats, foxes seen plenty of deer already 
um, and it is just teeming with life. Birds everywhere. Beautiful place. I could I could definitely spend another night or two out here exploring and just enjoying this place. It's pretty spectacular. I'm just about back to the main camping area on the island. I did want to say this. There's a stumbled across this old old cable. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of camouflaged. Got some more of it over here. Old cable here. And uh, some old pipe um, and other rusted metal stuff uh, I came across earlier back up in the woods. Anyway, there's definitely evidence of uh, some of the railroad activity that was going on here back in the early 1900s. Cool stuff. Well, there's something big up here, tromping around. It's either a bear or a deer. I apologize for the angle of the camera. The hull of my kayak is not conducive to mounting this thing, so this is what I get. I guess it could have been an alligator, but it, and I think it was a bear or a deer. It was moving too fast, and it was up in, it was up in that grassy stuff. It wasn't really in the water, so. I think it's a deer. I'm in the canal that leads away from Floyd's Island. Very narrow. And very shallow. When the swamp gets, when the water level in the swamp gets real low, this is or you can't paddle in here, it just gets too too dry. So right now the water level's up pretty good. There's a deer right off to my right. Wow, he's like right there. I wish you could see him, oh my gosh. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This two-day loop that I'm doing is, uh, as you can imagine, in a really remote part of the swamp and requires a permit uh, to access, I'd say 90% um, of what I paddled yesterday is in a permit-only area and probably 
I don't know, maybe 40% of, 50% of what we're doing today is a permit only area. One of the advantages of coming into these areas is that you're almost guaranteed to have it all to yourself. Um, in fact, you are guaranteed to, if you get a permit to come to Floyd's Island, you are guaranteed to have the island all to yourself. So there's no chance that you'll show up and there'll be another group there, or somebody else there. So when you get a permit, um, you you uh, you have the island for that day or week or however long you want to reserve it. And so the likelihood of you seeing anybody even coming or going in these areas is pretty, pretty remote. So I have not seen anybody um, since, well, yesterday morning when I left the parking lot was the last time I saw another human being. And I don't expect to see anybody today until we get uh, into, into those more open, non-permit areas. With it being a Friday, there's a good chance I'll start to see some local canoe and kayak and boat traffic in those non-permit areas. So, one of the other advantages <coughs> to today in doing this loop is yesterday was all upstream. So I had a I was fighting a, a current the whole time yesterday, with the exception of a small stretch. Um, so from the island, now heading back, I'll be going with the current uh, all day. And this section up here around Minnie's Lake, between Minnie's Lake and Stephen Foster, the, the current gets quite swift. So it'll be a, a much, much nicer, more relaxed paddle today as compared to yesterday. So... Yeah, he's found some sun up in here. Decent size, probably. I don't know, every bit of six or seven feet. I don't know if you can see him or not. He's laying up on the bank there. Oh, he saw us. Finally out in some open water. Feels good to be out of the shade for a change. Temperatures were in the 40s this morning. I imagine they're well into the 50s now out here in the sun. Feels pretty spectacular actually. Got a light breeze. Not a cloud in the sky. I'm starting to see alligators and turtles and more birds now that I'm out in the open. I have a pretty good vantage. So I just cleared Minnie's Lake. Um, I was gonna stop there and have lunch. That was the plan. There's a there is a shelter there where you can camp if you get a permit. But there was a huge group there. I don't know if they had stayed there or if they were just stopping for lunch. But there were I don't know six kayaks and they were packed full of coolers and everything else. And it really wasn't a good spot to try to squeeze in. Plus, I just didn't want to interrupt their day, so I just uh, paddled on by, said hello, and uh, I'm going to continue on down towards Billy's Lake. I may actually turn and backtrack a mile up to Billy's Island and stop there for lunch, or I may just uh, continue on to Stephen Foster and have a later lunch there. Well, I've finally reached Billy's Lake. The wind is in full force. Actually, it's not too bad, but it is definitely blowing for sure. 
anyway, it's a. Uh, I'm gonna head up to Billy's Island since it's fairly early in the day. It's only about uh, one o'clock, so I got several hours of daylight left, and I'm not quite ready to go home yet. So I'm gonna paddle up Billy's Lake to Billy's Island. I'll get up there, and I will enjoy lunch and uh, take a little hike, stretch my legs out, relax a little bit, and then I will uh, <clears throat> head back to the boat ramp at Stephen Foster. So I'm at eight, to eight miles plus, eight and change. I imagine by the time I get to Billy's Island, I'll be at nine and change. And I think it's, I don't know, maybe a couple miles back to the park from there, maybe three miles, if I had to guess, I don't know. Anyway, beautiful day. Well, after having lunch at Billy's Island, I uh, <coughs> started heading back to Stephen Foster and tucked up into a couple of little slews on the way back and didn't appreciate it until I got into this big open area, but there is quite a fire in front of me. I hope it's a controlled burn, because if it's not, it's huge. It almost looks too big to be controlled, honestly. <clears throat> I did see a, saw and heard a very low flying <clears throat> helicopter flying around the same area earlier. But uh, yeah, that's quite a fire. I suppose on my way back, I'll know more once I get back to the parking lot and check back in if I ask. Anyway, I'm back in Billy's Lake again, and I'm heading back to the boat ramp. Well, this is the home stretch. I just saw an otter. Nice way to finish the trip. Can add that to a bear, several deer, lots of alligators, plenty of turtles, and lots of birds. Great two days. End up logging about 24 miles over the course of the last two days and probably four or five hiking miles. Anyway, the weather was perfect, as were the conditions on the water. Not too windy, didn't run into too many snags, and uh, yeah, just a great trip all around. So, anyway, as I finish up here, I down to about 9% battery life on my GoPro, so I guess it's uh, a good time to call it. Got about 200 more yards. I see my truck parked in the parking lot here at Stephen Foster. So I'm going to get in, load up, and head back home.